Good morning, guys. I have my 1985 General Electric Weathertron here with a bad condenser fan miter. We're going to switch it out, put a new one in, because, you know, 1985, that's not long enough yet. It's not really ready for a change out. So we'll switch the motor. As you guys can see, this unit has the condenser fan motor facing up. We have our band here in the middle mounted three times. One, two, three. Right here. We have a similar control to what we saw on the commercial 8-ton GE unit that I put on Zach HVAC. It is a pressure switch to control defrost. So we're going to make sure our motor rests about eighth inch from that pressure switch. Reconnect this piping here when we're done because I have to take the top off. And uh, yeah, guys, I have the motor mounted. Of course, it's upside down right now. Easier to get in there. I slide it into the top, place it. Pressure sensing tube right about a quarter inch away from the motor there. It looks like between a quarter and an eighth inch. Match it up the way the previous motor was, even though this is not the factory replacement. Because when I called about the factory replacement, they kind of laughed and said, no, we can't look it up. So I got it in place. I'm going to flip it back over. We'll get the ground hooked up. And although it's really grounded anyway, so. But we're going to hook up the ground anyway. Guys, see the new motor in place right here. Down here, there's a knockout and a Romex connector where the wiring used to travel through there. I pulled the old wiring out. Once I have the grill in place on top and the fan blade, I can put these wires through here so I can connect them in the control cabinet. They should be long enough. So if they're not, we'll take care of it. But that's our next step. We got that in place. I need to put the blade on and then make sure the grill fits over this because the shaft is, of course, a little longer than the motor that was here before. So I may have to actually, hopefully I don't have to cut it off a little bit. I think it's going to be a little bit short enough, so we'll see. On our aftermarket motors, we have we have an aftermarket blade as well because it was fused together. Here's the hub for the blade. We'll put the hub on the shaft first, and then that blade will screw down to the hub. It's kind of a nice way of doing it. There is the hub mounted to the shaft of the motor. There's two flat edges on this shaft, so we have two set screws. One on either side there so looking good i'm gonna put the blade down on top of it and screw it in place and see how it looks the blade is now in place let's just see about the top here as you see we come over to the top it looks like our shaft is shorter than the top because it'll be bulged up a little bit in the middle so we should have a little bit of room i'm gonna set it on set it in place and see how it looks uh, with the motor and that shaft you guys can see there's plenty of room there uh, there's a good couple inches because of the the grate actually goes upward as it goes across. So we're good. We are in the control compartment now. There's our pressure switch for defrost, our old type fuse. We have capacitors here. This is the capacitor in question for our fan motor. We're gonna replace it because we need a 7.5. You can see some of the old controls up here that still look really good. Because most of the stuff I believe, if not all of it, except for the new motor, is original. So we're gonna replace the capacitor. We have one line of our power going to the fan right here. I was coming through the capacitor. We're going to take it all the way back. You see at the relay here, the little olive colored wire, all the way back to the contactor. We can intercept it here to get our power just tie into that existing wire. On the other side of the contactor is our other side of power coming down to the vacuum switch or the uh, pressure switch. And we're going to tie in right there. Our capacitor wires go directly to the capacitor like most of these aftermarket motors. We're going to hook it up and then take a look at it when it's all done. We have our new capacitor in. You see the two brown wires. These are loose right now until I finish testing the unit and make sure everything works. Once I see it's going to work out fine, I'll go ahead and strap them up. We have our one wire over here at the pressure switch, one leg of power to the fan motor, another leg here wire nutted together, and we'll seal that up as well whenever I get done testing it out. So we're going to put everything back together as far as the screws on the top, start it up, and see how it works. Guys, I want to talk about this relay up here a little bit, used during defrost. We have a coil voltage. You see the olive colored wire and the, oh, let's see if I can focus in on there, the black and red wire here. That's your coil. And normally that's open because normally your pressure switch wiring, you have our black and red here, is closed between these two points, giving power to the fan motor. It's open between these two points, sending power to this relay over here, or the coil for this relay, high voltage coil. Now on top here, we have two reds mated together, 24 volts, hot, 
we have our X2 or W2 and the orange for a reversing valve heat strip control voltage reversing valve control voltage and when this does make because it requires a defrost it turns the heat strips on via the control voltage here and turns the reversing valve into cooling mode through this wire here so right now we're adjusting the switch to make sure it's going to allow our fan to run by turning this knob here which we may have some adjustment left because it it's not the actual fan motor that came with the unit so a little bit of adjustment might be needed to have it properly defrost. Fan's good, going in the right direction. I'll turn it off so we can finish putting things back together. Guys, I'm heading out of my job here with the condenser fan motor, the old GE. And some of you probably would wonder why that unit is not changed out. Well, the the age-old excuse is the customer doesn't have money, which is you know, likely the case. But sometimes, and I, I look at this differently than a lot of people, I don't see every old unit as an efficient old beast that has to be changed out or his time is gone because I think that that unit has time left. Now, it's not efficient for sure, but every single part in that little beast was original except for what I was putting in there. I told the guy in there, the only thing Chinese in that unit is the crap I just put in it. Except for the capacitor was American made. So I like these things. I, you know, a lot of times I'll watch shows like on history, like American Restoration is one of my favorite shows or American Pickers. I think there's some value in seeing value that's left in an older appliance. I mean, these appliances were built tougher the GE Weathertron is one of the toughest bastards I've ever seen. So, I mean, it seems like a real shame to cut it loose before it's time. I'm glad it's still running. The charge was good on it. I mean, it wasn't dead on perfect, but it was close enough where I was satisfied with it. So, still putting out heat, still conditioning the house. And if I see one tomorrow, I'll work on it the same way. I thought it was a cool thing to discuss. How do you feel about machines like that? When it gets to a certain age, or if there are 22, do you just want to yank them out? Or do you think there's time left for them? It's an interesting thought. See you on the next one.